Hi, this is Mick Elliott from Electronics Specifier. I'm on the RAND technology stand at Electronica, and with me is Andrea Klein, who is the founder and CEO of RAND Technology, an independent global distribution company. Andrea, if we could start by just looking at the, how you see the modern supply chain and, uh, and RAND Technology's role in that. Thank you, Mick. I'm happy to be here. Very nice meeting you and your crew. Um, I would say that the what modern companies are looking at for a supply chain, I think we first have to think about the old world versus the new. So the last 30 years was really all about the old world, which was about mobile compute with a disruptor called the internet. 2020 was the line of demarcation, and now we are in the age of AI. So we are actually in what I would call a renaissance in hardware technology, and everybody needs to be very cognizant that they need to build more, more modern supply chains because we are at a moment in time that we are very short resources and expertise in the hardware technology channel. And so um, um, I think it's important when I think about what RAND's role is. So RAND is a tool in someone's toolbox. So a modern supply chain consists of factory direct, franchise distribution, or you have a global independent distribution company, or there are thousands of regional brokers. But each one is different. They provide different capabilities, and there are different risks and rewards. And if we have a moment, I can help explain that. Please do, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So for your audience out there, uh, when you think about the supply chain, a direct manufacturer, which is your TI, your Micron, or whoever you're using, uh, the value proposition is they work with the tier one customers, it's higher volume, it's lower pricing, and they support you in your technology roadmap. The restrictions of that channel are that their terms and conditions are fairly restrictive. And the other restriction is that their flexibility is limited to their own product line. The focus of that channel is more design wins, right? Yep. Now, if I looked at the valuable channel of franchise distribution, which has been changing over the years, I would say that that's more for the tier two and tier three customers. Um, the, they will work with smaller volumes. Um, they are higher priced than the factory, of course. But what they're really known for is their inventory management problems, Kanban, right, buffer stock. They have a little more flexible terms and conditions, so they are a valuable part of the supply chain. Uh, I would say their restrictions are they're limited by their line card. They're limited by they can only draw from what's um, been established in their region. They can't go outside their region. Yeah. And I would say that they're having some struggles right now in um, their customer service because they're having a hard time. A lot of people are leaving distribution because the value proposition is changing. Uh, I would say the focus of a franchise distributor is naturally their suppliers. So rather than being customer focused, although they care yeah. about the customer, yeah. their focus has to be their suppliers. Now, your next two channels are your global indis independent distribution companies. Those companies, there are less than seven or eight of us in the world, mm -hmm. and there is a very high criteria, and um, the right of entry is extremely difficult, and it's extremely expensive. So there has been much consolidation or dropping out in our channel, uh, but the criteria for that channel is they must have a global footprint on the ground around the world so they can buy within region. They must be highly certified. They must have an integrated quality management system around the world. They must have on the ground in-house testing uh, around the world. 
Uh, they must have financial wherewithal uh, so that they can manage organizations around the world. They must absolutely have legal accountability for customer safety, which is uh, warranties, guarantees, product liability, errors and emissions. Uh, and all of that criteria gives you the right to perform and be a partner to the tier one contract manufacturers, sub-assembly partners, and OEMs around the world across the sectors. From there, once you have that, that infrastructure and that capability and those customers, you now have a database of information that is unparalleled around the world. So, and there are many other requirements uh, of that channel. A regional distrib broker or distributor has some of the qualifications of the global independent distributor, but not all of them. So um, it either puts you at a little higher risk. Uh, uh, they may not have all of the capabilities that a global independent has because they don't have the financial wherewithal, whatever the case may be. But they, the right, like I said, the right of entry and the responsibility of the global independent distribution channel is really high. And I am proud to say, but I'm kind of sad to say, that after 32 years in business, we are still the only 100% woman-owned uh, and certified by the U.S. government uh, independent distribution company that is woman-owned. So I wish there were more of us. And frankly, I invite more of them out there because it is a different way of doing business. Well, I'll concur with that. Long, that's a long answer. I'll concur with your your point about women in technology as well. You know, and it is good to see. You know, I've interviewed uh, a, few, a few other women here to uh, the show, so uh, there is a bit of progress. Um, anyway, coming back to your point about uh, financial wherewithal, uh, does, is is that looking at financial wherewithal to source components from various from, from various places? Um. <coughs> It doesn't really, I, I mean, that has something to do with it, that yeah. you're able to buy it, yeah. right? But financial wherewithal means that I have backing in an organization that can, um, that can scale to as large as the market can get, as it did in 25 and, you know, 22 and 23, or yeah. uh, I have, or 21 and 22. Um, but I also have a company that is able to manage um, sales engineering, testing and logistics on the ground around the world in support of our, our uh, customer partnerships around the world. That's a large organization that needs a lot of support that you have to be able to maintain in all markets. So. Uh, that's a big investment because you're not just investing in people, you're investing in equipment as well. That's right, that's right. It's not just people, but it's infrastructure, but your people cost you the most. <laughs> Look, looking at your sources of components, can you, can you break those down for us? Well, it's my responsibility. Um, my job is to balance the supply chain on behalf of my customer. Uh, I have spent a career in this independent channel so, so I am where they go when they can't get their product. Uh, I am the problem solver, right? I am uh, manufacturer uh, autonomous, so it doesn't matter to me. So I have to be able to understand and to be able to source and execute uh, any, any commodity by any manufacturer at any point in the world at any given day. I have to be able to understand the trends in the market and to be able to provide enough market information to my customers so that they can make their best decision on behalf of their customers. So, um, um, do, do they come to you uh, for specific components when there's shortages or would they look at a complete bill of materials for you to supply? I would say that they, the customers use us in many ways now. I would say that, and I think this is important for a modern supply chain, right? Um, because most modern companies appreciate that, that supply chain is an imperfect world. 
uh, most appreciate that um, it, in, in the flattest market, there's five to 10% of un, uncontrolled procurement that takes place every day. There isn't a company in the world that isn't forced to use an independent. And I say forced because I was considered a necessary evil for many, many years. So I have fought for 45 years of being in this industry for the respect of what we do. Okay. Right? right. So, I mean, my job is to solve the problems, right? My job is you have too much, you have too little. It's my job to find a solution for it. But I think what most companies are thinking about right now is that I know I need this channel, I now respect this channel, I see what they are able to do on my behalf, but now I want to look at my supply chain because most companies, as I said, we are in a renaissance of hardware technology. <clears throat> we are at a moment in time that the baby boomers grayed out during COVID. Gen X is a very small generation. Millennials are not interested in the heavy lifting and Gen Z is too young. So we are very limited in the resources, <clears throat> excuse me, and expertise for this industry. That all being said, <clears throat> companies need um, more expertise and experience in their supply chain because they don't have the resources, number one, and their focus has got to be in the next generation of technology, right? Because we are going into an age that we have never seen before. And we are in the pioneering days of AI and all that that means for us. So it's a very exciting time. I think that certain parts of the supply chain's value proposition is going down and certainly my sectors is going up right now because of, you know, for RAM, 32 years of experience, right? Solving customers' problems. So what we do on behalf of our customers is we have very sophisticated, uh, uh, well-controlled supply chain on the ground, uh, commodity management on the ground around the world. So my job is to help source product for gap fulfillment. My job is to help reutilize the inventory and the surplus, uh, which is a, a, a wonderful sustainability issue rather than destroying them. Yeah. Uh, my job is to create cost reductions on their behalf. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, my job is to figure out how to move things around the world more effectively. My job is to help them with their inventory management. So housing and programming for that. Yeah. So I have a lot of responsibilities. Um, um, I would say as a global independent, um, we talked about the different, the different sectors and the different types of distribution companies. But one thing I'll point out, which is important in this, this question as well, is what makes RAN different from our competitors as a global independent distribution company, that really in the whole world market, there are less than seven or eight global independents with a full infrastructure on the ground around the world. Of those seven or eight, less than four or five, have board level testing to AS6081 around the world, aerospace. Of those four or five, less than two or three, have component engineering on the ground around the world. And of those two or three, RAND has the best documented quality record in the world of less than a quarter of 1% return in 32 years. But here's what we also do that's important and meaningful for the next generation. RAND is the only global independent distribution company that has full design and production engineering. So we can solve problems and create solutions beyond what's taking place right now um, quicker and more effectively because we've seen more across all of the sectors um, than probably what they might find in-house. So, and of course, the other differentiator is that we're the only woman-owned company in the world. What's important is that about being a woman-owned company is it's a different way we go to market. Okay, Andrea Klein, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. That was terrific. Thank you. That was brilliant, lovely. Thank that really you. was. Thank you.